Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm, warm welcome to this webinar, webinar dedicated to um, the financial instruments available and financial tools available to Italian companies present in the Indian, in the Indian market within the context of the current COVID-19 emergency. Uh, I have the pleasure to uh, coordinate and moderate this second webinar. We had the very first one uh, dedicated to the Indo-Italian last week, where we introduced in general the um, 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 role and the uh, collection of uh, um, feedbacks from Italian companies present in the Indian their major needs and expectations in this in this context we have today um, a, a more focused webinar dedicated to financial tools um his excellency vincenzo the look ambassador of italy in in india will uh, introduce the meeting and then we will have some um presentations by representatives of simespa along with a sharing session with uh, mr Hugo Doyle from Intesa San Paolo and another sharing section, speaking session, uh, conducted by Mr. Carlo, Carlo Pacifici from a Meccanotecnica, Meccanotecnica Unida. I will, after that, share with you a few slides of an instant state survey that the Indo-Italian Chamber has conducted, specifically focusing on financial needs of Italian companies in India, and then we will open the floor to the questions of the of the panel. So, without much further ado, we request the second ambassador, De Luca, to officially kick off this second meeting. Please, ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you, Claudio, and uh, let me first of all thank so much uh, uh, President Pasquale Salzano from uh, Siemens, a very good friend of mine. We shared a lot, a lot of experience uh, together, and the CEO of Siemens, uh, Mauro Alfonso and also Carlo De Simone from Simest, and also uh, Ugo Doyle from uh, Intesa, and uh, uh, Dr. Pacifici, that is a very good experience of investment here in India. Today, we offer to the Italian companies here in India, thanks to the Chamber of Commerce, I want to thank uh, uh, Chairman of the, the, of the, of the Chamber, uh, uh, Cesare Saccani, that is, is also online, all, and uh, of, of course, uh, the Secretary General Claudio Maffioletti. Uh, today, we um, have invited CIMEST to illustrate the available financial tools for supporting Italian SMEs abroad, with a particular focus, of course, uh, with India. Let me just uh, uh, show you some, very briefly, some figure concerning the economic situation at this moment here in India. And I want to start from the IMF growth projection released the last 14th of April. And in this uh, projection for 2020, we will see India as the highest growth estimate in the G20 economies. That is 1.9%. You know that the Euro area has been estimated at minus 7.5, the world economy minus three, and the United States minus 5.9. That means that the Indian economy Although the lockdown and the difficult situation that the Indian government is uh, facing vis-a-vis -vis the coronavirus is still a very high potential of uh, growth, not only in 2020, but in the coming years. And uh, one proof of the importance of the, or the increasing importance of the Indian market, and we have to consider also the increasing importance of the Indian market also considering the tensions, the existing tension between US and China, is the investment that the, the last week, in these very days, Facebook has carried out here in India. 5.7 billion investment 
to uh, enter in the GIO platform owned by Reliance Industry. I have to tell you that Reliance Industry is one of the most important buyers of Made in Italy. So you can imagine also the potential in the coming uh, years of the market here in India and also the opportunity we have for our products. Let me also introduce some figure con concerning the economic scenario. You have seen, you can see in this slide that the manager index slipped to 51.8% in March from 55.3% in January. Uh, we have a decline in remittances of 23 billion dollars. This is also the impact on the Gulf countries of the oil market uh, evolution and also the uh, reduction in export and import in the month of March compared to the previous year. The consumer inflation is down to 5.9%. It's also due to the, the, the price of oil, of course. And also I would like to really mention only briefly the uh, stimulus measure undertaken by the Indian government. That we have first, there will be a first uh, uh, economic stimulus plan of 22.6 billion, mainly focused on humanitarian food security measure. There will be a, a further, there will, there, there will a further, uh, uh, there will be a further uh, uh, stimulus package, especially for SMEs in the coming weeks, announced by the Indian government. Banks have been exempted from making dividend payout for 2019-2020 and liquidity coverage radio requirement of banks from 100% to 80%. Also, the cost of money, borrow money is 3.75% and lend money is 4.40%. This is the picture of the situation now in India. But now very interested in uh, listening the presentation of uh, Siemens, of the president of CEO of Siemens, that I thank so much for the kind acceptance of our invitation. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador De Luca, for your introduction to this webinar. I would like now to request Mr. Pasquale Salzano, Chairman of Siemens Spa, to share with us his uh, keynote remarks. Please, Mr. Salzano. Thank you, Ambassador De Luca, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon from Rome. I'm very glad to attend this webinar, a timely and unique opportunity for Siemens to present the financial tools it offers to Italian business in India. I wish to thank Ambassador De Luca, the Indo-Italian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and the Italian Trade Agency for organizing it. The pandemic has driven us into a global economic crisis on both the supply and the demand side. All company, companies urgently need liquidity injection to sail these troubled waters and to prepare for the recovery in a landscape that will be different from the pre-crisis one. Small and medium enterprises and mid caps, the backbone of the Italian economy, are naturally more in need of liquidity and financial support to export and grow abroad. On the other hand, the IMF estimates that India's growth rate will be the highest of any other G20 country in 2020. And this figure alone leaves little doubt on the need to, co to focus on India in our endeavor to support Italian businesses. Need of liquidity, SMEs, India. These are the key elements that bring us here today, closer than ever to the Italian business in your country. Siemens is part of Cassa Depositi and Prestiti Group the Italian National Promotion Institution, a group with total assets exceeding, exceeding 400 billion euros, which has placed the support to Italian companies at the core of its action. 
together with Sace, which you met in a webinar 10 days ago, Siemens provides financial support for the international growth of the Italian companies. Our distinctive element is that Siemens focuses on SMEs and mid-caps working hand in hand, in hand with the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, our embassies, and the other partners of the Sistema Italia. Siemens has been active for almost 30 years, standing by companies during their entire internationalization cycle, from the initial assessment on entering a new market to expanding through direct investment. Siemens acts along three main lines of support. The first one, subsidized rate soft loans for export and internationalizations through a state fund managed by Siemens on behalf of the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Second one, direct equity investments in Italian companies on the national territory or abroad. Siemens becomes a minority institutional partner of the company with a maximum 49% equity stake and eight years involvement. And the third one, contribution to the stabilization of the interest rate on export credit operations. With 271 million euros in 53 Italian and foreign equity stakes, 290 million euros invested in almost 900 subsidized financing deals and 4.7 billion euros in 47 export credit support deals, Siemens supports over 1,800 companies in 105 countries. We operate in India too, where we have seven projects now. From the outbreak of the crisis, Siemens strengthened its support to Italian companies, especially SMEs. We could do it thanks to the robust replenishment of the state fund we manage to provide soft loans and export and internationalization purposes. Thanks to the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we could offer our assistant companies extended deadlines and several months moratorium on the repayment of a broad range of our loans. More actions are under study to further reinforce our support to the international growth of Italian companies. Without further ado, allow me to express to all of you my best wishes for a lively and successful webinar with a sincere encouragement to part participating companies to challenge us with questions, suggestions, and also criticism to help us improve our action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Salzano, for your introduction to Casa Depositi Prestiti, Sace, and CDS Activity. Um, I would now request Mr. Mauro, Mauro Alfonso, Chief Executive Officer of Siemens, to give us some more details about the instruments that Siemens can put in place to support Italian companies and their investments abroad. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation that Ambassador De Luca extended to Siemens, giving us the opportunity through this important initiative to make us feel close to young Italian companies in India, some of which are our partners, and to illustrate what Siemens can do for them in general, and above all, during this moment of great difficulty for everyone. As you probably know, India is an industrial and commercial partner of primary importance to Italy. There are about 700 Italian companies and Italo-Indian joint ventures present in the country. The bilateral exchange in absolute terms in 2018 was 9.5 billion euros. And despite the slowdown in the economy, India's potential as an and market remains among the highest for Italian exports, especially for demographic factors and the path of reform to relaunch competitiveness. The machinery sector is, in terms of export value, the most important of our country, 
followed by the chemical pharmaceutical sectors and that of electrical equipment. India represents the third largest export market in the field of machinery for about 1.3 billion euros, in particular machine tools, agricultural machinery and food processing. Then the automotive sector, including components, represents one of the segments with the greatest presence in, of Italian companies in India. Just for example, FCA, Piaggio, Magneti Marelli, Brembo, Pirelli, and many others. In the engineering, construction infrastructure sectors, there are companies in India such as Ital Cementi, Saipem, Maire Technimon, Techint, Technip, Mapei, as well as a large Italian transport companies, Ferrovie dello Stato, Fincantieri, and Alitalia. Italy is the fourth largest exporter of construction materials and furniture to India. Renewable energy is a sector to focus on the promotion of Italian companies, given the great prospects for future growth in that, that it presents. Any annual Green Power, Ansaldo Energia, Ducati Energia are already present. In the food and wine sector, the demand for Italian products is constantly growing. Some companies already have offices and production plants in India, of Perfetti, Ferrero, Lavazza, Bauli, and others, while some others are present through importers and distributors. Some examples are Barilla, De Cecca, De Cecco, Sacla, Monviso, Grana Padano, and many other uh, strong brands uh, of Italian companies. The Indian wine market is estimated at around uh, 35 million bottles a year. Uh, it, it is growing up 10% uh, uh, annually. A country that, like India, is so important for Italy is equally important for Siemens as well, which supports the internationalization of Italian companies. I would, uh, would therefore like to briefly illustrate, colleague Carlo De Simone will then illustrate them in detail, which tools we make available to your businesses and how they have been used by our partners to grow in this country. A short list which will be better detailed by my colleague. Number one is soft loans. Thanks to this tool, whose resources come from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation Fund 394, we support companies, especially uh, small medium enterprises, from the beginning of the growth path in foreign markets. These are subsidized rates and resources currently. 0.079% uh, per annum, so it is very low, to cover, for example, the cost of promoting our, your products abroad by participating in trade fairs exhibition. Open a first commercial structure, finance you in the medium to long term if exported, allow you to exploit the potential of e-commerce, and everything happens completely online. In the last three years, we have carried out 19 financing operations relating to India for a value of 5 million euros. Main sectors are mechanical, metallurgical, chemical, and petrochemical. On the equity side, which is another leader of business, is investment in risk capital. This is an equity loan to which other facilitating tools can be added, as Carlo De Simona will illustrate which has a series of advantages for businesses. The first is having an Italian state alongside, which is not a bad solution for uh, being present in uh, foreign countries. Number two, being able to count financial support with a medium long-term time horizon, up to eight years. Number three, we are a minority shareholder. Number four, we are a purely financial partner who, as a rule, do, does not enter into management. We let you entrepreneurs do that thing that you are much better at all. Since the beginning of the business, which is well, dated 1991, Siemens has acquired 37 shareholdings for stakes worth 55 million euros. The latest investments made by Siemens mainly concern the mechanical and metallurgical sectors. Among our success stories in India, and not only, that of Mechanotecnica Umbra, of which the CEO, Dr. Carlo Pacifici, will be able to testify. In the export credit side, uh, which is another line of business, uh, 
uh, we support cre export credit in the dual form of buyer credit and supplier credits through which we support your exports of investment goods and uh, granting you payment extensions at competitive conditions. The six operations carried out in India over the last three years for 21 million of euros in financial commitments belong mainly to me the mechanical and the metallurgical sector. I would like to end with the, what Siemens is doing to support you in this difficult phase of a crisis due to COVID-19. The two moratoriums concerning the facilitated loans instrument. Moratorium on initi initiatives suspended or cancelled due to COVID-19 for the suspended extension of six months on documentation and reporting for the cancellation of the penalty for the return of uncommitted sums and payment moratorium on all ongoing initiatives with suspension of payments up to 12 months of the principal and interest of these settlements envisaged in 2020. I want to thank you for your attention. I will leave the floor to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alfonso, for giving us some more insights in the instruments that CMS can put in place to support Italian companies on the history of CMS in the, in the Indian market. I would now request Mr. Carlo De Simone, Senior Manager in the External Affairs Department of CMS, to share with us some more details about these instruments that CMS can put into place. Please, Mr. De Simone. Yes, okay. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, let me thank, first of all, Mr. Ambassador De Luca, that I can consider a friend uh, together with uh, Madonna Ferretti, the third person that uh, are, have collaborated a lot with the CMS. And uh, so on this side, we think that uh, in India, probably one of the best uh, efforts that we have is also a good network that we can consider from a long side. This is one of the most important sides that we have to consider when we go abroad together with the small medium enterprises. And it is uh, really helpful for us also to have a good connection in the country and also to have people that know very well our business. This is uh, probably the main uh, importance uh, to underline be before to, to, to see in deep which is uh, the activity that we can uh, put in place, especially for the, for the small and medium enterprises, not only that can consider to invest for the first time in India, but also to consolidate their presence in uh, India. Because uh, this is probably one of the, the most important uh, thing to say that uh, CMS can help also the Italian company that are already presented in India, also to invest more and develop better their presence in the country. Uh, this aspect, probably Mr. Alfonso already said, which are the line of activity that we have, and, uh, we have uh, underlined in three, in three different line of activity. From one side, there is the soft loans activity that we can manage, where we can manage some public funds through the ministry of uh, economic affairs. And on the, other, on the other end, we have the equity participation where we uh, invest together with the Italian company. And uh, probably this is uh, the main activity that is well known for Siemens, but is not the only one. The, on the other end, uh, the extra credit support that we can also give to the Italian uh, enterprises when they go abroad and uh, they have really important uh, furniture to, to give to their, to their uh, counterparts. Let me start probably from the beginning and uh, I will consider also to share the, the presentation that uh, we have for today and uh, I would really I will try to to share the screen with you and uh,
Told you, I don't know if you have the presentation because I have some problems with sharing the the picture. If you can, uh, if you can help me with, okay, thank you. I think that now I can use. Yeah. Let me check that probably I will through not not on the on the first uh, three or four. But probably it's better that we go through to, to the to the specific project and the main activity. Yes. Okay. Okay. Here, that's as we can see the three line of our activity that we have is starting from the soft loans, where we can manage these loans for the ministry, and uh, these kind of soft loans are really important for the small and medium enterprises because uh, this kind of soft loans can be um, requested from the enterprises on digital market. This means that there is a specific platform where the Italian companies can register and uh, can require the specific investment or the specific financing to, to Siemens. Um, go through all the soft loans that we have, and probably to go through the other slides, that is the, the next one, uh, we can see which are the, the specific uh, financing that we can put in place and consider important for the small and medium enterprise. There is the first one that probably in, in a period like this one, where the, uh, the necessity to have uh, working capital is really important for the for the company. Is the uh, we call it as a, uh, as a, for, uh, better um, capitalization of exporting SMEs. This kind of line of activity is specific for Italian company that is already exporting. In this kind of uh, financing, we can put uh, in place a financing of over uh, of um, about 400 euro. And uh, in this kind of uh, financing, it's not required to have a specific project, but only to satisfy two uh, requirements. The first one is that uh, the average of uh, export in uh, the last two years is uh, about uh, 35%. And uh, now this percentage is uh, already to renew and probably it will be no more than 20%. And that uh, this could be also a new approach for this kind of line of activity. On the other hand, the other uh, specific uh, requirements to access to, the, to this line of activity is to have um, a, 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 um, there is an average to, to reach that is um, the, for manufacturing enterprises is uh, a capitalization index between 0.65% and 1.60, and for commercial enterprises, uh, is uh, the range is uh, from starting from 1% up to 2.60%. Also, this range it will be reviewed in few days, and uh, there will be a range more uh, specific for the. Uh, manufacturing enterprise, it will be starting from 0.65% up to 2%, and for commercial enterprises, starting from 1.1% up to 4%. This uh, specific uh, financing pro uh, activity is really important in this period because can help um, Italian companies to have uh, a lump sum immediately because our financing is uh, uh, is already released once that uh, the con the contract is uh, 
release and uh, is a media is a lump sum that we release uh, and uh, the, the the previous job reimbursement is about six years with uh, a two years of uh, pre amortment uh, the aim of the financing is to, to contribute the development of the small and medium enterprises and in this period it's really important also to to have lump sum and we know that is really important for the uh, for the development of small and medium enterprises in a period like this one, where the um, liquidity probably is uh, the first um, necessity to recover. On the other hand, the other uh, financing that we can consider also important is to release the, up to the participation to ferry. And um, in this case, now we can financing all the costs that one company has to support to participate in a free trade. Uh, so we mean in this case that we can financing all the costs, not only for the participation at the specific trade, but also all the other costs that a company have to support to participate in a specific uh, um, uh, trade fairs. On the other hand, uh, the advantage that we have seen already before, that is not only the rate of interest that up to now is, up to today is uh, 0.069%, so above a seven basis point. Um, the other advantage is uh, the, the maturity of this kind of loans that goes from uh, four years up to six years. So important is that uh, in this case, we have uh, the consideration of uh, to financing specific cost, immediate cost that uh, a an, uh, company support, but in a, in a medium long term. On the other hand, there are there is also a specific financing tools for the e-commerce. And these kind of tools, I think that could be really also interesting in this period because the e-commerce in a period like this one probably is the main activity that all the, com the Italian company are trying to develop better because uh, uh, the e-commerce take the opportunity to reach all the countries, but also to have a major uh, activity in, in different uh, also products that you, you that you normally sell. Uh, so the e-commerce is a, a good opportunity in a period like this one. And uh, on a specific financing that we have, we can also uh, not only develop the IT platform that a company would like to create, but also the opportunity to use a marketplace. So I, we know that in India, there are some specific marketplace different for uh, type of sectors. But uh, in this case, an agreement with the marketplace in India can help the Italian company to sell their products in, uh, in this country or not only in this country, but also in the area. And that this could be helpful for the company to, to have this kind of financing, because uh, we, we consider the, the, the development of the e-commerce so one of the main activity where the focus of the Italian company will be for the future. Um, in a period like this one, a lot of uh, uh, question about uh, the e-commerce financing of Seamus uh, uh, raise from the company because uh, uh, this kind of financing can help also the company to consider which is the, the advantage of the opportunity to use uh, um, the, the IT platform and not only physical platform. Um, to enter the markets in India, there is also another specific financing tools that is the programs for entering the market. In this kind of project, 
uh, we can finance the entrance into new markets, opening a permanent commercial structure. In this kind of financing, we can consider to finance all the costs related to the opening of a new structure, but also, for example, if you have an agreement with a, a local partner where we can consider to finance all the costs that the local partner support to sell your product. In this case, uh, you, can you can ask a finance to Siemens to have a support like this one. And on the other end, the advantage of, the, of this kind of financing comes from the rate of interest as we can see before, but also uh, for the length of the financing that in this case is about six years. And uh, uh, with uh, a two years of uh, uh, pre-amortment, uh, there is an advantage to realize better your program and after to repay the programs with uh, uh, financing costs. Uh, one of the, um, probably in the near future, we will have also other some advantages on this kind of soft loans because uh, there will be also another fund that will be co-financing this kind of soft loans, and there will be an um, an uh, an advantages because uh, this kind of co-financing it will be a non-repayable funds or out grants loans. So this means that there will be a percentage of the financing that Siemens will release that will not be refunded from the company. This is one of the um, updates that comes from also from this kind of emergency from the COVID emergency, and, and this uh, one, and it's uh, one of the measure that uh, the um, the last decree has uh, put into force, and uh, will come in the near future. Passing through the other activity that we have, and uh, is uh, related to, to the equity investment. In this kind of uh, activity, Siemens can be seen as a, a silent partner. Uh, because on one side we are uh, we normally take we always take minority stakes from a participation, but on the other hand we do not uh, we are not involved in the managing of the partnership because we consider our Italian partner uh, the best can that can manage. The company, but on the other end, we can support the financing, and uh, this is our role to support uh, the equity investment. So we consider and uh, we are concentrate on the financial investment, and on the other end, to have Siemens like a partner is also an institutional support that we can have together. And uh, probably in some cases and in some countries, is also an advantage to have uh, uh, Siemens as a partner. In the specific uh, um, kind of equity investment, when we consider an investment in India, together with our capital investment, there is a, a venture capital fund that can be added to our, to our stake. And this means that in the minority stakes that we have, there is a venture capital fund that has different uh, costs, and especially there is a, uh, also a specific uh, percentage that we manage with uh, this kind of venture capital fund that is, a, a, is a, a, an ulterior advantage for the company. On the other hand, there is also when Siemens support this kind of investment, there is also 
and uh, an advantages with uh, interest subsidies that is related to the role of the bank, the Italian bank, that support the investment of the Italian company. Because uh, to the equity loan release from the bank to the Italian company in this kind of investment, we can release an interest subsidies that uh, up to today is uh, about 1%. And uh, this means that uh, wherever is, uh, whatever is uh, the kind of rate of interest related in the equity loan, we can give only because the CMS is in the joint venture, we can release and subsidies of uh, rate of interest that is about 1%. This means for the Italian company to have, as we see, a support on the financial side. And this is probably one of the best efforts that we have when we, uh, when we uh, re are related to the Italian company. This is probably uh, one of the best rules that uh, we can consider and uh, probably is also uh, the best way that normally CMS is uh, well known when uh, we speak about investment. But it's not the only activity. As we, can, as we have uh, already um, heard before, the main activity that we have, that we have to support uh, the small and medium enterprises is related to the soft loans activity that in the 2019 gave us the opportunity to support uh, at least 800 companies. This means that uh, uh, with soft loans, probably we support a lot of small and medium enterprises in their development in the different countries. On the other hand, when we give support in equity investment, we have the opportunity to share also the ability and also to share the collaboration with the Italian company. And, and in the meanwhile, also to give them the opportunity to develop better their effort in specific manner and uh, also with an institutional partner. I will go through also on the third line of activity that we have, and probably uh, also on the other end is uh, probably the Sasha support uh, well known better than ours, but in this case, especially due to uh, new release that uh, has come into force uh, since, since uh, two or three months ago, there is uh, a contribution on supplier credit that uh, is uh, a scheme that can be used from uh, also small and medium enterprises when they sell abroad their machine or their, um, or their plants. In this case, there, will, there can be a support from Siemens on the, to, to give them a little interest subsidies, in this case also related to the discount that you will have from the transfer of uh, securities from the exporter to a forfeiter. Forfeiter is uh, normally a bank that discount this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of instrument. In this case, we can release a net revenue up to reach uh, normally 100% of the uh, of the uh, value of the of the transfer price. In this case, the advantage is not only for the exporter to have the interest subsidies from Siemens, but also for the buyer because they received um, a delay payments that is uh, up to two years from five, and also 
there will be a rate of interest applied in the contract that is the commercial interest reference rate that is normally lower than the uh, rate of interest applied from the market. And uh, in this case, the buyer has the advantage to have a delay payments and also a financial condition that uh, could be uh, useful for them. This kind of scheme, uh, together with uh, the other one that is uh, more structured and is the buyer credit scheme, in this case, uh, the results with uh, an Italian or a foreign bank that support the buyer um, to acquirement of big, in this case, our big plants, or uh, for for example, also for the acquire for the acquisition of shipyards or some other kinds of uh, big investment normally uh, down from the country. In this case, there is uh, from one side. Seamus that support the Italian company or the financing company, and also the role of Sasha that release a, a, a warranty on this kind of a transaction. So there is, a, and in, a, in a, some cases, there is also GDP that release financing. So there is all the three company, uh, GDP, Sasha, and Seamus that are involved in this kind of transaction. Uh, probably the most important things to say is uh, that uh, uh, we are um, at disposal to also do going deep in this kind of uh, activity that we have. And uh, we know that probably also together with uh, uh, all the, the people that are here, that we can uh, consider and uh, uh, also to uh, participate in, in this case with uh, video call or some other aspects because we are at disposal to go in deep and uh, uh, verify together if there are the condition not only to financing some activity for the small and medium enterprises but on the other end we can consider also to see together which are the investment to do, and uh, which is the possibility to uh, support the investment of the Italian company. I, I think that probably it will be better to leave uh, uh, space uh, to uh, Mr. Pacifici and also to the question that uh, are, I, think, I hope that will be part of this kind of webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. De Simone, for the detailed slides. Uh, I shall remind all the participants and the attendants that there is a Q&A possibility, so whoever is interested in knowing more, and I can anticipate, Mr. Uh, De Simone, that many companies attending this webinar will be asking, what is a financial tool? Uh, which is most suitable for the liquidity as far as working capital is concerned for the Italian Indian subsidiaries of Italian companies and Indo-Italian JVs. What are the requirements to get access to these financial instruments and what will be the timeline in order to get the, the financial uh, instrument activated because as you can imagine um, within this uh, context and this uh, perspective time is becoming um, an issue and a, a very strong constraint. Um, so I invite again all the attendants to use a Q&A uh, facility in this webinar to put, their, put through their, their questions. Now I would ask Mr. Hugo Doyle from uh, back in Tesa San Paolo to uh, understand from his side what within the banking system, obviously with a specific focus on banking Tesa San Paolo, what is the um, availability of instruments already probably existing and uh, perhaps also to share with the attendants a little bit more uh, of perspective of scenario because um, as we uh, in the discussion that we had in the past days it came out very very clearly that one of the most critical factors is uncertainty so nobody knows exactly what is going to happen how long the whole uh, the whole emergency will last and 
more uh, than anything how long it will take to go back to normal if we are ever going back to normal. So, Mr. Doyle, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Claudio. Very well put, absolutely. Um, uncertain, uncertainty rules, and uh, it's unfortunately going to be the name of the game for quite a while. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, dear Enzo, for, for the kind invitation. Um, I work at Intesa San Paolo. Intesa San Paolo is uh, the biggest Italian bank and uh, as such has a strong vested role in intermediating the balance of payment flows between Italy and India. We've actually been in India with a physical presence with our Mumbai office since 1988. And with this office and with uh, our international network, we offer the whole gamut, so let me call it, of uh, trade export finance products and advisory to our um, clients, to our corporate clients, of course, from matters of credit to bid performance bonds uh, to uh, financial guarantees. Of course, um, we do this together with uh, Indian banks and we intermediate our flows a lot also with uh, Indian corporates. Our focus is not only for Italian corporates uh, investing in India, but of course it's increasingly so with uh, Indian corporates, given the very sizable uh, role of the Indian economy that uh, Ambassador De Luca was mentioning in, um, in his opening remarks. Um, so in our role as, as, uh, as a big financial player, of course, we are following closely the uh, dynamics that are unfolding at the financial level worldwide. And um, we've been following the, the recent spring meetings of the IMF. Actually, this is the first time in, in 10 years that I've been attending the spring meetings virtually like, like everyone else. Uh, so, so it was quite different, I must say. The main uh, indication that came out, and we see uh, this indication unfolding also in the policies of the Italian government and what we as a bank are doing, um, is the fact that all the measures that we've been seeing up to now are really, I wouldn't even call them stimulus measures, but they are emergency relief measures. Um, it's difficult to, to see any industrial policy for that matter unfolding yet, given the very sizable uncertainty that the COVID virus is, is uh, discharging on the whole economy, let alone seeing stimulus packages as typically defined. The argument being that with this shock, we don't know really where the um, potential output of every economy is. And so to define a a demand policy, be these investments, be this a push in consumption, be this a, a relief of capital buffers for banks or what have you, is premature, simply because governments and uh, big uh, policy actors as we are, don't really know where um, potential output of economies is. This doesn't mean that we shouldn't be doing anything, uh, not at all. Uh, the IMF has been analyzing in detail the, the very sizable packages, you know, about the seven trillion uh, dollar uh, increase in balance sheets of, of central banks, for instance. What is clear is that these measures are temporary. Uh, they're timely, uh, they're sizable, they're targeted, but they are temporary by definition because they are emergency relief uh, measures. Having said that, um, we still see within this framework of emergency relief policies a reason for, for uh, um, Intesa San Paolo to act, to act not only with respect to Italian corporates that are operating within Italy, but to act in favor of Italian corporates that are uh, inter internationalizing their effort, which is one of the... Um, uh, main tracks of economic growth for Italy. Um, to this effect, we have increased our credit lines to corporates by 50 billion euros. Um, this has happened over the last few, few weeks. And uh, this has been, of course, linked to the uh, government decrees that have been uh, extending guarantees to corporates. And 
you were mentioning the crucial importance of um, of liquidity, Claudio. This is is one of the crucial aspects that we are tackling, and we are uh, really churning. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. An enormous amount of requests for uh, tap up liquidity provision from our clients and from new clients in Italy, of course, but that have international uh, dimensions. So I will say that uh, both the, the pre-approved credit lines and the new credit lines are being used uh, uh, mainly for cash liquidity needs from our clients in this context of guarantees. Let me just say, maybe you were mentioning something about the scenario. I think a crucial thing that we have to keep in mind is that uh, the health of corporations in this crisis will be determined, hopefully, by their business model, and this is what you would expect from uh, from uh, how can I put it, manuali uh, di uh, finanza uh, that that one would look at, but. To some extent, uh, in, in a more worrying way, I would like to mention that the health of corporations and banks, to that matter, for that matter, is in Europe uh, currently and increasingly being uh, linked to where these corporates are. If one country is able to guarantee 100% of the books of, of corporates that are based in that country, while another country within the European Union is not able to do that, you realize that there's an enormous distortion in the uh, single market activity and how these markets operate when they go abroad, when they go to India, when they go to China, when they go anywhere. So uh, my hope and expectation is that these guarantees are, yes, temporary, but that they are as, as much as possible made uniform across across European Union countries, else the distortion will be uh, complicated to tackle both for corporates and uh, for banks. Let me, let me finish off uh, with, uh, with one item uh, of which I, am, I must say I'm very proud. Uh, I was mentioning how Intesa San Paolo is the biggest uh, financial player, uh, private financial player in the Italian economy. We have been also the biggest uh, vehicle of donations for um, tackling this COVID crisis. Uh, the bank has donated out of its coffers 100 million euros worth of money to, to tackle uh, the immediate needs, the emergency needs, going back to a word I've been using quite, quite, quite often in this, these few words I've been saying. Uh, to the uh, COVID effort. Um, it's not a fact of ranking who is better, who is worse, but let me say we've donated 100 million euros and uh, the second player is, 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 is um, quite some, some space off from us. So thank you very much for this. I just wanted to mention one thing where I see a strong link, additional strong link between Italy and India. The fact that in uh, December of this year, Italy is going to take on the G20 um, presidency. Um, Ambassador De Luca was mentioning the G20 dynamics and how India is uh, performing better than all the, of the other G19 countries. Well, as we well know, in December 2021, it will be India's turn to take on the G20 presidency. So this fact and the common focus on SMEs uh, from both the Italian government and the Indian government, I think bodes very well for how at the G20 presidency level, policies will be targeted to uh, ameliorate the condition of, of these crucial players, not only in the Italian economy, not only in the Indian economy, but overall globally. SMEs are the driving force of, of uh, the world economy, and I think and hope that the G20 presidencies that I mentioned will embrace this, this crucial aspect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Doyle, for sharing with us your insights and a little bit of scenario setting, which is probably one of the most complicated activities to do in, uh, in these days. I would now request Mr. Carlo Pacifici, CEO of Meccanotecnica Umbra, one of the uh, uh, 
examples on how a collaboration between Italian financial institutions and the private corporate can lead to uh, successful cases. Please, Mr. Capi Carlo Pacifici, um, share with us your experience as Meccanotecnica Mecano Umbra with uh, CMS and the CDP Group. Thank you. Perché non, non sapevo che purtroppo era, la presentazione era in, in inglese. Eh, non so se è un problema. I will support you. Ok, grazie. Eh, prima di tutto ringrazio per l'invito. Eh, saluto l'ambasciatore De Luca, il presidente della CIMES, il dottor Salsano, l'amministratore delegato, il dottor Alfonso e gli altri, gli altri relatori. Thank you. Uh, mi dia solo un secondo per fare da traduttore simultaneo. Ah. I would like to thank everyone for inviting me at this webinar in which I can have the chance to share with, uh, with you the experience of my company. Okay. Eh, Meccanotecnica Umbra è una piccola multinazionale eh, fondata oltre 50 anni fa in Umbria e oggi siamo leader mondiali nella progettazione e produzione di tenute meccaniche per pompe acqua che trovano applicazione nel, principalmente nel settore automotive, nel settore degli elettrodomestici e nel settore industriale vario come il farmaceutico e il food. Sì, adesso... This is a presentation. Please go ahead. The, the attenders okay. can go through the, the slides. Okay. Noi alla fine delle, degli anni 90 abbiamo intrapreso un percorso di internazionalizzazione e questo percorso eh, lo abbiamo fatto insieme alla Simest che ha sempre supportato i nostri investimenti all'estero, sia in maniera eh, soft, cioè con eh, studi di fattibilità o per la penetrazione commerciale, oppure con una propria e vera presenza nel capitale sociale. Noi abbiamo iniziato alla fine degli anni 90, inizio del 2000, con la costituzione di una società in Brasile perché la Fiat chiedeva ai propri fornitori europei di poterla seguire anche in Brasile per localizzare tutta la supply chain. E da lì abbiamo iniziato quindi questo processo di internazionalizzazione che poi è proseguito in Cina, negli Stati Uniti, in India, in Svezia, e ultimamente proseguito anche in Canada e in Turchia. Noi, I punti di forza del nostro gruppo sono sicuramente, eh, oltre alla, alla presenza locale in tutti questi principali mercati del mondo, anche mh, un forte investimento in ricerca e sviluppo. Noi fa, eh, investiamo circa il 3-4% del, del nostro fatturato in ricerca e sviluppo Abbiamo fatto grossi investimenti anche nelle industrie 4.0 e molta, eh, molti investimenti anche nell'ambito della formazione. Noi, il giro d'affari del nostro gruppo, noi siamo un piccolo gruppo che il giro d'affari è intorno ai poco più di 70 milioni di euro e abbiamo circa 800 dipendenti in, in tutto il mondo. Oggi come strategia abbiamo quello eh, di diversificare eh, i nostri prodotti, i nostri mercati perché per il 50% siamo, eh, dipendiamo dal settore automotive e invece noi vogliamo crescere eh, la percentuale del mercato da servire eh, nell'ambito eh, soprattutto di settori come quello del food e quello del farmaceutico che in questo momento poi tra l'altro stanno eh, andando molto bene. Noi abbiamo in particolare una, una società in Svezia, la Unsil, che è specializzata proprio nella produzione per queste aziende di processo e mh, ci sta dando ottimi risultati. Per quanto riguarda l'investimento indiano eh, che abbiamo eh, fatto insieme alla Simest, è eh, una società che abbiamo costituito nel 2010. Prima abbiamo costituito una joint venture con un partner locale. Poi però Abbiamo capito che insieme non eravamo così efficaci sul mercato perché c'erano proprio strategie, mentalità e culture completamente diverse, ma il partner era giapponese con una società in India. E così decidemmo di acquisire la loro percentuale e far entrare nel capitale la Simas, che si è sempre dimostrata disponibile a supportare i nostri investimenti all'estero. Quindi noi siamo collocati nel Tamil Nadu a Madurai, abbiamo circa 100 dipendenti ed un fatturato di circa 7 milioni di euro ad oggi. I principali clienti che abbiamo nel settore automotive sono tutti i più importanti clienti che operano nel mercato 
indiano, quindi abbiamo sia Marudi Suzuki, Tata, eh, Asho Playland, Mahindra e Ford e Renault. E abbiamo anche deciso di aprire un ufficio a Pune per la progettazione e l'ingegnerizzazione di prodotti che vengono poi ehm, perfezionati nella nostra società svedese. Abbiamo circa quindi 10 ingegneri a Pune eh, che disegnano, progettano e trovano delle soluzioni anche delle innovative per la nostra società svedese. Ed è una soluzione per noi molto importante perché ci permette di avere ottime competenze a prezzi eh, molto competitivi rispetto a, al costo che abbiamo per un ingegnere in, in Svezia che tra l'altro non è facile neanche da trovare in Svezia. Eh, preparato. Per quanto riguarda il rapporto che abbiamo con Simes, è un ottimo rapporto che si è consolidato negli anni. Io posso dire che per noi Simes è un partner molto importante. Abbiamo iniziato l'esperienza ancora quando c'era l'ingegnere d'aiuto, poi abbiamo proseguito con il dottor Novelli, la dottoressa Ricci, il presidente Rebecchini. Speriamo anche che con i nuovi vertici di poter continuare insomma, questo rapporto perché comunque abbiamo intenzione di crescere all'estero facendo altre acquisizioni eh, in altri settori diversi dal, dall'automotive. Anche se poi comunque nel settore automotive non lo abbandoneremo perché per noi rappresenta il core business anche perché abbiamo dei progetti molto importanti e già eh, qualificati presso case automobilistiche tedesche per quanto riguarda l'auto elettrica. Non so se... Thank you, Mr. Pacifici. I will summarize briefly in, in English for all the, all the attendants. Um, Grazie. Canotecnica Umbra is a, a, a case studies, I believe, in the collaboration between uh, um, CMS Spa and Italian companies as they have been since the very beginning of the international, um, their internationalization process side by side. In India particularly, they started um, participating in a collaboration, a venture with a local partner, with a minority stake, and then uh, things grew and uh, the importance of the market was very well understood by the Italian investors, which decided at some point to invest 100% in the Indian company. And nowadays they have one productive plant in uh, Tamil Nadu and another one, a service center, uh, mm. center in, uh, in, uh, in Pune. Um, Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Pacifici. Um, I have now a very short presentation to share with you in for regarding an instant survey that we have conducted precisely to give some material to the speakers and also to the attendant on the occasion of this of this webinar. The survey was on the, uh, the scope of the survey is to assess the financial requirements and the challenges faced by Italian companies in India. Obviously, the survey is directed first and foremost to the, our members. I shall remind you that we have a membership base of approximately 1,100 companies, out of which I would say 85% are companies based in, in India but we not only uh, reached out to our, our members. In a span of just a few days, we were able to collect 45 surveys from uh, Italian companies in India. Our target for this survey have been Ital Indian subsidiaries of Italian companies, Indo-Italian JVs, and also project offices to understand their immediate cash flows, cash flow needs. As you can see, we started just on Monday when together with the embassy and Siemens decided to work and launch this uh, uh, webinar on financial tools. But the collection of surveys and, uh, and feedback from uh, Italian companies in India is ongoing. With regards to the main takeaways of the entire exercise, there are four major points that have emerged from the surveys that we have collected. On average, the 45, probably now they've already become 50 companies we have um, interacted with, have uh, liquidity, autonomy, and uh, cap capability to cover four months of working capital. One of the main requests is easy availability of working capital at minimal interest rates in order to sustain this liquidity needs of foreign Italian companies in the Indian market. 
two of the major problems which have been identified, which are probably the, the problem, the problems nowadays for the, the corporate world, for small and medium sized companies at least, is uh, the need to provide advanced payment and cash on delivery to suppliers on one side and difficulty in uh, collecting receivable from, from existing clients to turn uh, invoices into actual realization. Our survey, um, as any survey, started with a profiling of the companies. As you can see, most of them, two thirds, are active in the manufacturing sectors. 70% are Indian subsidiaries of Italian companies. Another 25% are joint ventures and 7% uh, approximately is a different kind of companies present in, in India. It might be associations or also other kind of project offices. The sectors which um, the companies, the respondent belong to are the sectors which have also been identified by CMS as some of the main ones. Machinery, manufacturing and equipment, engineering, but also a few of them in the infrastructure and construction sectors, agri and food industry, automotive and auto components. And there are also some consulting companies that have responded to our survey. The kind of size that the, these companies have in terms of turnover and, and stuff is 60% uh, um, less than 5 million euros turnover, another 30% between 5 to 20 million euros and more than 8% um, that have more than 20 million euros turnover. This is somehow a good um, mirror of what is the presence of Italian companies in India that are mainly, um, for your information, we have counted approximately 620 Italian companies, Italian investments in, in, in India. And most of them belong to the, to the first batch, to the companies with uh, um, uh, yearly turnover between five to 20 to 20 million euros. In terms of size, number of uh, uh, staff employed and employees is 60% up to 20, approximately 20% between 20 to 50 and more than 17%, more than 50, more than 50 staff. Coming to the problems and to the priorities, the most, um, compelling problems that uh, the respondent have to face have obviously to deal with uh, fixed costs. Fixed costs is human resources and uh, staff salaries, rentals and utility payments, and supply chain management in terms of um, receivables and, uh, and payables. A, bit, a little bit less in terms of inventory management that will become, in any case, as soon and uh, um, as soon as, uh, as we progressively um, get close to and hopefully uh, soon uh, happening uh, reopening of operations, inventory management will become an issue for many of the, of the companies, Italian and not in even Indian companies active in the, in the Indian market and, and, and globally. Another interesting question we asked is for how much, how much, and uh, I gave a synthesis, a brief summary at the beginning. How much can you survive with your present cash availability? Up to three months is 60% of the respondent. Up to six months, 30%, and more than six, six months is 15% of the respondent. So the um, urgency of availing of our cash injection to cope with uh, fixed costs and working capital is widespread in the, in the companies that we have gotten in touch with. What are the immediate steps taken? Obviously the first thing that any organization, both in the private and in the, and in the, um, brought in the profit and no profit sector is that to cut operational costs. Um, the second one is to find alternative solutions to allow the company to have this uh, liquidity injection needed to survive in the, next, in the next month. In some cases, probably one of the most logic uh, reply that we got is that we have taken no steps yet, particularly considering that at present the Indian market is completely stuck, uh, stuck 
as uh, many other markets, considering that the possibility of uh, reducing the uh, size of the staff within a company is not allowed, there's nothing much more to do but to wait and see what is going to happen in the next, hopefully, few, few weeks. This is the end of my presentation. Um, I think, and I can see that quite a few questions have come through to, to our, to our uh, speakers. I would like to summarize some of them. Um, when it comes to the capitalization of companies, which is the procedure to follow, which are the requirements and the time expected to get the funding, which is more or less what I had uh, somehow anticipated early on. Who is the contact point that we can address to start the procedure? Um, I would ask Mr. Carlo De Simone to kindly address this question. Yes. Now, I think that in this case, uh, when we have uh, a sort of uh, um, the deep in uh, details or other, probably my contact and also as well also of uh, Francesco Pili that we are the, the line of business that uh, can give uh, the first support, uh, especially to the Italian company based abroad or to have uh, the main important information about uh, all soft loans or also the equity participation scheme. In this kind of uh, activity, we do not have problems to, uh, to share this kind of information and also um, to, to, to can go through the information that the Italian companies require. In this case, our contacts can be used without any kind of problem. Uh, to, to answer also about the capitalization of small and medium enterprises, the soft loans activity uh, can be uh, probably the most useful for the small and medium enterprises because uh, it's a kind of a lump sum that we can release directly to the Italian company to invest in working capital or as well in some other aspects because it's not related to a specific project, but it's also, is only a kind of a financing or a loans that we release up to satisfied only two kind of requirements. One, once is uh, to have a sort of percentage of exports from the Italian company, on the other end, to have uh, um, a good range of uh, capitalization. Uh, it depends uh, if it's a commercial company or a manufacturing one. Posso interveni uh, may I just uh, make a proposal, a practical yes. proposal? Yes. Maybe uh, the Chamber of Commerce could circulate a note concerning the procedure, the contact point, and everything useful for. Uh, addressing the request to CMEST uh, concerning capitalization and other uh, uh, tools that are available. Could be useful after this webinar to inform all our companies here about the procedure and the contact point at CMEST. Thank you, Carlo. Thank you, Vincenzo. I think that is a, a good proposal and probably the best way also to, uh, to, to assist better the Italian company that always today are present here. So I think that this is probably the best way also to, to go through specific projects and also to specific proposals that can come. I think that probably Claudio is uh, uh, well uh, also on, uh, on this side. Absolutely, absolutely yes. And we will coordinate on that in the next, next few days because we are expecting quite a few queries to come through. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador ambassador to pro proposing that. Um, one more question is related to e-commerce. So I believe Carlo De Simone is still addressed to, to you. Yes. Um, Let me see if I can read it. No, I can read it out. I can read ah, it out. Okay. Um, 
can the e-commerce facility be used also to cover the cost related to um, ads on an e-commerce platform? Which criteria should the company fulfill to have its e-commerce campaign covered by Siemens? Which portion of the advertisement expenditure in the market is covered by Siemens? Okay, in this case, if we are speaking about an Italian company that is interested to create a platform in India or to have an agreement, a specific agreement with a marketplace in India, in this case, we have uh, the, fun the loans that uh, cover all the costs related to the creation of the IT platform, and on the other hand, all the costs related to the agreement with the marketplace. Also, there are other costs that are really important that normally one uh, company uh, have to um, have to sustain when they create an e-commerce platform. And for example, advertising, marketing, all these costs are already financing with the soft loans that we manage. So uh, when we speak about the e-commerce loans, is not only related to the creation of the platform or to the agreement with the IT platform, with the marketplace, but also all the other costs related to the programs. For example, also the training of the personnel or to manage the marketplace or the platform of the e-commerce platform, as well, we can uh, recognize all the costs of marketing and advertising, for example, to the platform e-commerce that we know that are really important in this case when uh, a company invests in e-commerce platform. So as we can see, all the costs related to this kind of investment are financed by the law. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. De Simone. I believe as I said, that most of the queries are going to be addressed to, to you and the, CIM, and the CIMES representatives. Um, Mr. Giovanni Bartoli from uh, Chief Aspa, um, a construction equipment, equipment company uh, which is constantly working with the Indian market, um, having the opportunity through the local dealer to provide underground and concrete equipments for all major infrastructural construction sites in India. They have been collaborating and sorry, cooperating and applying for such a credit, credit export support. And always their main concern has been not so much the approval of the credit insurance support, but the long procedures that most of the times they are not able to manage with the customers. Thus giving the chance to our strong local and international competitors to get the final deal. Mm. It's my question on how GDP, CMS, and such a considering the high, actual high demand of financial support will make all process smoother. Um, we really need to move, um, keep the feedback circulating and report in a, in a, in a short time, week, 10 days, um, because this is the need from the Italian company. Okay, on one I can uh, answer on the uh, side of Siemens and also of Sasha because uh, I know that uh, our strength is also related to have a, a digital impact with all the um, um, normally the small and medium enterprises. We speak a lot and we invest a lot about uh, the program on digital. So we try to, to be responsive in a few days or weeks where we can and where we can do that. But otherwise, if normally the, they take more time to uh, evaluate the, the requests or other, probably these circumstances normally is related to specific projects or uh, specific demand re related uh, to the Italian company. In this case, I can say that normally, for example, if I have to say uh, where we speak about the equity loans, starting from the day with a company that uh, requests specific instruments to CMS, 
normally in uh, 30, 45 days, we give uh, uh, a response also uh, with uh, um, a specific project that can be uh, also contractualized in uh, no more than 30 days. This means that uh, starting from uh, the first day in uh, 60 days, normally, a, finance, a, a request is completely is, com is completed with uh, uh, also with the signing of the contract. So I think that normally related to a specific project is uh, not a big period. But uh, I, I I understand that probably sometimes uh, is requested from the company to to have uh, more relation. But in this case, I think that probably you have to see the specific request uh, um, and uh, what we can do is uh, to work together and to, to be more reactive if we can. Thank you. One more question has come through in the meanwhile. This is from Jane Ambier from a logistic uh, company. Um, is asking whether Siemens provides loan to service industry, like the logistic industry, especially since the credit line in India market is as high as over 60 days, a very long waiting queue. And this has blocked our credit lines affecting cash flow severely. Mr. De Simone, I think this is... Yeah. Um, I think that in this case, uh, there are no problems to, to speak with a uh, specific um, request. And uh, I think that normally uh, there is no problem about the date of uh, to, 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 uh, to speak about it. But I think that probably the, the most important thing is to share all the information at the right time. And not only when it's too late for everyone. So if we share the information since the beginning, probably is the best way also to have a quick response from us. And uh, this is uh, probably the, the invitation that also and the proposition that uh, Mr. De Luca has uh, done before. He said uh, the best way is uh, to be in contact with the uh, Italian company and see which are the, the, the specific requests and also to share the information since the beginning. This is, I think, the best solution also to approach better um, the request of uh, less time to be responsive from uh, our side. Um, thank you. Thank you for the, for the reply. Two more questions have come in. Another one more from a construction company, Mr. Gabriele from Soilmex Pack, is asking whether uh, such a seamist would be able to forfeit discount without recourse credits owned by Indian subsidiaries. And Mr. De Simone, I will attach also the second one so you can answer to us in one go. Is there any minimum ticket size or amount for funding? And do you also fund new projects? I believe in Mr. Abhishek Patni is asking the second question. He uh, refers to perhaps startups. I think that uh, in this case, uh, starting from uh, probably um, these two more questions, um, when, when I speak about uh, the supplier credit, this is probably the best response that we can do, and uh, not only as a seamless, but also as Sasha. Because the social seamless in this case can give support on one hand with the warranty and on the other hand also with a, a subsidy interest support to the Italian company that is uh, um, uh, that is uh, uh, involved with the construction of a, a plant or machinery or something like that. In this case, I think that probably the best solution is uh, to uh, to see how does it work the, uh, the supplier credit scheme that we can uh, uh, 
that we can uh, utilize together with the uh, uh, with the banking system. And on the other hand, I think that probably uh, is to understand that, uh, uh, for example, for the supplier credit, there are some some kind of schemes that are requested. For example, the 50% in advance and the 80% at minimum is it should be delayed with a minimum period of delay of uh, two years, up to five years. So it depends on which are these kind of requests. That's why probably uh, I think that probably the best thing is to, um, to consider all these questions on specific projects and uh, on specific uh, um, investment that probably this kind of uh, uh, company are doing in this period. I think that probably also on the other end, when there is a, a, a kind of uh, information, I think that uh, in this case, uh, we are at disposal to uh, satisfy all these kind of questions also by email or contacting by, by phone, because uh, in, also in this period, we are working as a normal period uh, by home, staying at home, but it's a normal period also for us working. Thank you, Mr. De Simone. His Excellency Ambassador, I think we plan to have a one and a half hour webinar and we are right at that at that point would you would you like to to close and to wrap up the the webinar yes thank you so much uh, claudio for contacting this uh, very interesting for us uh, uh, webinar and i want to thank again pasquale salzano president of simest mauro alfonso who attend all the webinar here with us uh, Ugo Doyle uh, from uh, uh, Intesa Bank that gave us a very interesting perspective also on the future and present uh, scenarios. Carlo Pacifici for his uh, experience here in India, very useful for everybody. And Carlo De Simone, we worked together for a period as Minister of Economic Law. I'm so happy to have you here and uh, giving Thank us you, a uh, explanation on the procedure. What I would suggest to Siemens, I think also for Siemens, maybe Mauro Alfonso would uh, add something, it could be very useful to keep on in having this contact with the Italian companies who are here in India, who are investing in India, and who are now suffering the same problems as the Italian companies have in other markets abroad. But internationalization of our companies is a key also for our future growth in Italy. Italy is, uh, as you know, a country that has uh, more than 30%, 31% of the GDP uh, that is made of uh, Italian export. And Italian export is impossible without uh, a permanent and strong internationalization of our companies. So thank you, everybody. And I don't know if uh, Mauro or Alfonso would to say something. And uh, again, thank you so much for your participation and for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Enzo. Uh, uh, it has been important for us to participate to this uh, webinar. Uh, I see that uh, number of participants is still around 100. So this is a signal that uh, what we have done has been uh, presumably appreciated. I just want to leave you with a, a couple of messages. The first is that despite the country, I mean, Italy is still in lockdown, we are fully operative. So our offices are working uh, uh, as usual. The second is that uh, timing in business activities, as you know, uh, is crucial. And it is crucial uh, maybe more than in the past now. So in the past months, we have been working hard to uh, make procedures uh, shorter. And especially in some uh, financial products, uh, especially linked to the 394 fund, we are now in the condition to give a response uh, in 10 to 15 days. That means that uh, given the, sh the cash shortage that uh, companies have now, that can be a, a very effective way to, to give support. Uh, and f the final message is that uh, India for us is a strategic and we will be very, very happy to have some follow-up to this uh, interesting webinar. So 
thank you again to everybody and uh, see you soon. Thank you everyone for being here with us. Uh, the Indo-Italian Chamber of Commerce is available to work with our business community in, um, in India and obviously with Italian institutions with CMS. The presentations will be circulated to all the participants at the end of this webinar along with uh, the context that can be um, addressed to well, your queries as far as financing and uh, financial instruments are uh, concerned can be addressed too. Thank you very much everyone and um, I hope to have very soon another uh, webinar in which we can um, share with you some success stories and some uh, inflows and injections of, uh, of liquidity to our companies. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Grazie a tutti. Grazie, grazie, arrivederci. Grazie Claudio. Grazie.